Hey guys, thanks for watching. I wanted to address and answer all of your questions that you posted to us. We've been gathering them since I think November 19th when you guys were asking us all these questions and I want to give you all the answers that you asked for because essentially everyone asks for the same questions. So I'm just gonna give you the answers, the raw uncensored answers to all your questions. So I'm gonna go through them now. How much money is recommended to start the franchise successfully? You know, whenever you're building a house or you are remodeling your house and the contractor tells you it's gonna be $50,000, I always tell people add 20% onto that for extraneous expenses. You never know what's gonna come up. So uh, on how much is recommended to start a franchise, I recommend $150,000 that you're probably not gonna use it all, but you wanna have enough money in a emergency fund, so to speak, to get you through, to maybe blast that marketing out. But for more information on that, you can go to spaldingdecon.com slash franchise, and all the requirements are there. But again, I would recommend about 150,000. That puts us in the low cost franchise area. Um, so, uh, you can also get an SBA loan, a uh, small business association loan, which is essentially a government back loan from your bank uh, to finance the franchise, uh, no collateral. And I think you have to have maybe 15,000, 20,000 liquid, and then they'll loan you the rest of it. Uh, next question, how do I start a career like this? Um, so you don't need any particular schooling to get into this type of career. If you're, if you're applying with a business in your local area, just apply. Uh, and they will provide you with all of the training and certification that you need and uh, to be successful in the business. So um, a lot of people ask this. For some reason, they think that you know uh, college is required or, or a trade school or something. That's not the case at all. Um, so next question, I live in central Florida. Do you guys have a team that works in this area? What and how does the training or franchising work? Actually really interested in this profession. Love your Instagram. So we do cover central Florida. Uh, we're in our corporate office is in Tampa, Florida. So we cover all of the central Florida area. Um, so the question is kind of twofold. If you want to work with us, just simply apply online. I think it's spaldingdecon.com slash careers, and uh, you can send an email to us uh, if we're hiring for that area, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, if you wanna start your own company, you have two choices. You can go to um, crimescenecleaning.thinkific.com, and uh, the site will be in the notes below and you can get the online training, start your own business or work for another company, or you can apply to become a franchisee and be a part of our brand and our family uh, by going to spaldingdecon.com slash franchise and you'll get more information there. Uh, next question, is franchising your company only open in the US or can you do it in another country? I am Australian. At the current moment, it is only in the United States, but we will be expanding to Australia, Canada, and the UK. So um, I just don't have a time frame on that right now. Um, so if I had to guess, I would probably say three to five years for, the, for those areas. We're working on expanding in the continental United States right now. Uh, next question, assuming you need to purchase and reorder several items, what is your go-to store or manufacturing provider do you just pick up more at Walmart or order on Amazon or is there a specialty shop? We have a contractual relationship with several suppliers that supply us everything from our suits and our gloves to all the way to our vans. So um, it's a different supplier for almost each item. Chemicals is something different. So if you become part of our franchise brand, uh, you get those discounts and uh, those relationships with our suppliers. Uh, the next question, we know when cleaning blood, there's a risk of HIV and hepatitis C, but what are some of the uncommon viruses you could pick up from blood and decomps? Um, actually, HIV is uh, very difficult to contract 
uh, doing our type of job. HIV requires a host and it doesn't survive outside the body. So when we get there, it's typically hours to days to weeks to months after the person has passed away. So HIV is not really one of our big concerns. Hepatitis is our big concern. Um, they've shown that hepatitis can live outside the body for up to three weeks in some cases. And uh, last time I checked, they were already uh, coming up with hepatitis G. So, um, you know, when I first started this business, I think we were up to uh, C or D. Now we're all the way to G. So there's different strains of stuff. We have to be careful for MRSA and uh, norovirus and just things like that that are very uh, contagious. Um, you know, so we're, we're cautious in all respects of every time we're dealing with uh, body fluids. Uh, next question. Your employees probably take bloodborne pathogen training as well as some type of Hazwopper. What type of insurance do you need to cover workers in the environments you encounter and do you have to prove or attest to the insurer that everyone is current on their safety training? So we do have bloodborne pathogens. We do have a 40 hour Hazwopper. Um, and uh, we have of course, workers comp, general liability. Um, our, all in all, we pay, I would say, approximately $50,000 a year in insurances. So insurance is extremely expensive and it's a sunk cost. It's something that we hope we'll never use. We've never had an exposure in, this, uh, in our corporate office here in 14 years. So um, our safety plans are working. Uh, the workers are very cautious and we thank God, knock on wood, we haven't had any, any exposure incidents, but uh, the insurer always has the right to audit us at any time. And that's fine because we always keep safety records and certifications on file. Um, and we also remind our franchisees to uh, renew their certification annually if required. The next question, what's something that you guys cleaned up but never forgot what happened there? Um, you know, I, I think this is, this is gonna be an individual answer for me. It'll be different for Kyle, it'll be different for Juan. Um, you know, I would say every time that I pass uh, a building which Honestly, after 14 years in this city of Tampa, just about everywhere I drive, I pass a building or a house or a neighborhood where we've done a job. We've done thousands of jobs over the years. So uh, every time I pass by, I'm like, I've done a job there, I've done a job there. So I remember just about all of them. Um, maybe not the specific incidences, but I was in uh, downtown St. Petersburg uh, this past weekend and I passed a building that was being renovated and I just pointed to the third floor apartment. I'm like, I did a decomp there. So it's like that stuff never leaves me. So I, I always remember it. Uh, next question, how to self start this service in a rural area? That's a great question. So what I recommend on that is if you wanna start your own business, go to crimescenecleaning.thinkific.com and the link is below. And that is the site where you can take online training and get your certification. There's a business course there that is essential to getting started. It gives you all the contracts, how to market in this business, um, your hazardous communication program, respiratory protection program, all of the OSHA required stuff is given to you so you can start your business. It's much cheaper than a franchise, but again, you are on your own when you start your own business. Um, but click the link down below and uh, you will get sent to the site where you can pick each individual class that you want to train and get certified in. You don't have to pick them all. Um, next question, have you ever had someone get sick at a site and why? Um, I haven't, I've never had anyone get sick, but we did, I remember uh, a couple times, but one specifically, we did a really uh, nasty, nasty decomp. And when we arrived, the firemen were running out of the apartment vomiting. So, um, and uh, they were just shocked that, you know, we walked in with no masks because we were trying to evaluate the smell. But uh, you get used to the smell after a while, but um, no one, uh, for us has gotten sick uh, on a job from an employee standpoint. 
Um, the next one is I'm 18 and I'm looking forward to a career field and becoming a forensic pathologist. My question for you all is what happens to the bodies after they have been discovered from the crime scene? How do you care for the bodies even if they are decayed? Thank you so much for the content. It's fascinating. So we do not deal with the bodies at all. The bodies are always gone by the time we get there. And they are either, if it's a natural death, they are taken to the funeral home. If it's a suspicious death, they're typically taken to the coroners or the MEs for autopsy. So if you are going to become a forensic pathologist, that's where you would come in because you would perform the autopsies on these suspicious type deaths. So, um, you know, this is a great, job for you if you want to learn more and get prepared for being exposed to that type of thing uh, when you go through medical school. Next question, how much is the pay asking for a friend? Um, that really depends on your experience. Um, we have a scale here in the corporate office, uh, everything from high school and nothing else all the way up to college, military and construction experience. So typically I would say it's between 14 and $20 an hour for our particular office. Each of our offices are individually owned and operated so they can pay whatever they want. Um, next question, I'm always impressed at how caring, considerate and respectful you are in regards to someone who has passed, hoarding homes or just dealing with people in general. Is there training you all take to know how to deal with sensitive topics? Or do you specifically hire people who have that kind of personality? Um, that's a great question and thank you for your comment. So one of the uh, essential components to getting hired here at the corporate office is empathy. You have to have empathy to work in this business. Um, and you know, if you don't have it, that's something that you really can't fake, uh, nor should you. If you don't have empathy, then this is not the business for you. Um, we have made the mistake before of taking on franchisees who uh, did not have empathy or not have the proper um, personality for this type of business and we immediately got rid of them because they weren't a good fit. So whether you're an employee or a franchise owner, if we find that you're not able to develop relationships or have empathy with our customers, you're not going to be here very long. So we, we will terminate your employment or terminate your franchise contract. Um, next question, how would I find a job like this? Uh, what would I look under for a job like this? So say for example, you're in Dallas, Texas, and um, I would just Google Dallas, Texas crime scene cleanup companies and then you'll come up with a slew of them and I would just call and see if any of them are hiring for a technician. Um, and again, like any job, persistence is key. Uh, we like persistence because uh, if we're maybe not hiring at the current moment, but that person is persistent and they keep contacting us every month or so, when an opening comes up, we're probably gonna call you. Uh, the next question, is there a competition with other crime scene cleaning businesses? Absolutely. You want competition because competition means that there's a market for your services, right? So uh, just about every major metropolitan city in the United States has a crime scene cleanup company. So if you're looking for a job, it's pretty easy to find one. Uh, next question, how much training does one person need in order to work for this kind of company and what is the pay rate? And does a person go through a 30 day work period or a 90? There's a lot of questions in there. So I, I can only answer this question for our company and our corporate office. So we put everybody through a 90 day probationary period. Um, and typically within the first two weeks, we can tell if that person's gonna make it or not. So we, we typically don't need a full 90 days. Um, the pay rate, again, I, I said that earlier for us personally, it's in between 14 and $20 an hour. Um, we offer vacation benefits. Um, holiday pay, all that good stuff, um, extra pay for uh, on-call, after-hours type stuff too. So um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, next question, do you guys have contracts with incinerators to dispose of hazardous material and do they charge by weight or volume? Uh, good question. So there's very few actual incinerators left in the United States because of the EPA restrictions. So most of us use autoclaves, 
which uh, you can Google in autoclave, but essentially it looks like a giant submarine, but it is a microwave. So it heats up to, I think, right under 300 degrees, and it keeps it there for a certain period of time, and then that's considered sanitized. And then it goes out of the autoclave and it gets either emulsified or it goes as is into the regular landfill. And that's called autoclaving. And yes, we have a uh, contract. We've always had a contract with a uh, company to do that. Um, they pick up our office every two weeks. Uh, we average, God, I would say 500 to 1,000 pounds every two weeks. So. This, this location is, is pretty high volume. Uh, next question. What do you think it takes to be the right candidate for a job like this? What sort of personality, experience, type of person do you look for when hiring for such a bizarre job? Um, I can only speak for myself here at the corporate office, but again, we look for empathy. Um, I like a person that has construction experience and a person that has a really a good attitude. So physical fitness, a good attitude, and empathy are the three things that I look for. Um, if you do not have all three of those things, you will not make it here at our location. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter if you have college or you have a high school diploma. Uh, what matters is inside, because I can train a monkey to do this, but I can't train you to have a good attitude and to have empathy. Uh, next question, do you guys make money by the hour or per job? And the answer to that is both. It depends on the job. And that's it. So I think I answered most of your hot questions. A lot of them were uh, duplicate. So you guys all have the same questions. Again, if you have more questions, please feel free to put them uh, down below in the comments and we will create another video uh, to address them and answer them. But thanks again for your support and for watching us.